Hi everyone! This is a sew along for the smooth thrown dress in the view A, the V neck with the elastic back. So the first step is to lay out your fabric. Um, I like to cut this pattern on the fold. It's just way easier to get like the true 45 degree angle that you need for the bias cut. Um, so my linen is quite uh, loose weave and it's kind of hard to lay so I spent a few, quite, quite a few minutes laying it out um, trying to get it straight um, then I have my back piece here and I want to lengthen this pattern um, it comes right above the knee uh, if you just follow the pattern but I want to lengthen it and I think I have 14 inches that I can lengthen it so I'm just using a ruler to make an even curve and then I use my rotary to cut it. Here I'm using a leftover piece to cut my straps. Um, I have guides on my cutting mat so I can make it 45 degrees. So I'm just cutting one inch strips here. Um, please forgive all the birds outside. <laughs> I live in Hawaii and there's birds and chickens everywhere. So I gently fold up my pieces so I'm not like stretching them because it is cut on the bias. It can easily stretch. Um, so I just carefully fold my pieces when I'm not using them. And here I'm laying out the fabric for the front piece. And um, I'm going to do the same as I did for the back, lengthen it 14 inches to make it like more of a midi length. And then don't forget to cut your notches. And I'm using the leftover pieces uh, of the fabric to cut out the front yoke and the back elastic channel. So I'm just trying to, and those are cut on the straight grain. And since this fabric is a, a gingham, it shows you very easily the straight grain, but it can be frustrating too because <laughs> you want to make it super straight so I'm taking my time cutting my pieces and here I am preparing the spaghetti strap pieces I like to have the folded edge on the right and I um, the top edge that's square I carefully match up so the strap doesn't have any weird twists in it when I start sewing it so I kind of like feel the strap where it wants to hang and I don't try to force it and match up the tops So we're sewing the spaghetti straps a quarter inch from the folded edge, about seven millimeters. And I, I'm doing a quarter because I'm sewing with linen, it's kind of thick. But if you're sewing with silk, you could maybe go a little bit smaller. Then I sew a seam right inside of that seam we just sewed. Um, I usually just move my needle over one step. This is to enforce the spaghetti straps so they don't unravel. And then you cut a rat tail cord, or any kind of cord really, just a little bit longer than the, the strap you just sewn. And then I trim the seam allowance pretty close to that seam. You insert the cord with the safety pin through the spaghetti strap and um, I do this method because I can't figure out a loop turner to save my life. If you know how to use a loop turner, good for you. You don't have to use this step, but um, I like to do my spaghetti straps this way. 
So the whole rat tail is inserted and then I will sew really secure that rat tail inside of it by going over it a few times. You definitely don't want this rat tail cord to get loose. Then I cut off a little bit extra at the end there so it's easier to turn. And I start by pulling the rat tail from the, from the opening on the other end. This can be kind of finicky so you really have to like get it started and I like to use these um, tweezers to push the end in. Um, it can take a few minutes but there we go and now it's started so I just keep pulling that white rat tail cord until it's all inside out and you can choose to um, cut it off at the end and reinsert it or I just leave the spaghetti strap empty because I feel like it's more flexible and it works better uh, when you're actually wearing the dress. The rat tail can make it kind of stiff if you want to reinsert it. And then I press my spaghetti straps while pulling them a little bit so they're a little bit longer and thinner when you attach them to the dress. And here I am sewing the side seams of the dress. I forgot to show you how I lay them out but it's just the side seams. And I sew the first seam a quarter inch from the edge. After you've sewed the side seams, I trim them, so I'm cutting about an eighth off of the seam allowance. And then we're going to press it all to one side. Some people say press the, when you're making French seams, press the seam allowance apart. And you definitely should, but I take the easy way out and I press them to one side. I don't really feel like it makes a difference. And then I turn it inside out again and want to press the seams just like flat so it's easier to sew the second seam. And here I have it pressed flat so I'm sewing the second seam to encase the first raw edge. And I'm sewing this also at a quarter inch. After you sewn the second seam on the French seam, I press the seam, the side seams towards the back. And here I am sewing the front yoke and the back elastic channel together at a half inch seam allowance. I then press the side seams open and you're sewing both pairs. You're sewing two pairs of front yokes to back elastic channels at this point. And one of them should be interfaced. Here I am cutting the spaghetti straps to the length of the chart and the instructions. Um, I was making this dress for myself and my right shoulder is a little bit lower so I made that one a half inch shorter so it doesn't slide off when I'm just standing around. And then I pin them to the um, to the front yoke that is supposed to be on the inside closest to your body, the one that with the interfacing on it. Um, and then for some reason I switched the straps here, I don't know why. I repinned them um, to the front top edge of the front yoke. And then I find the notch on the back piece and Pin it to that one just vertically like that. I like to sew these down or baste them down vertically so you have a good angle of the straps when you put the whole dress together. Otherwise they could kind of they could skew different ways. In my machine here uh, the few dogs aren't really catching the fabric so I'm having to just kind of move it on my own while basting it down. Okay, 
Okay, now it comes time to attach the front yoke or the yokes to the dress. And here I'm drawing some guidelines. Half an inch from the raw edge, I'm drawing lines so I can find the center front point. I'm doing the same thing on the front yoke. Chickens are extra loud today, I think. You can see the points there. And then I snip down, straight down to that point in the center front of the dress. And then I clip the curve that's right above your bust so it um, is easier to sew to the other curve on the skirt part. So you can cut these a quarter inch to three eighths deep because you're going to be um, sewing it half an inch. I put a pin through the center front point here and match it up for the center front point on the skirt. Um, and this will act as kind of a pivot point. So I start by lining up that side. And then I line up the, um, the side seams. So I find half an inch down on both side, on um, both pieces. Um, and I line that up and pin it into place. So you're sewing the, the right side of the front yoke to the wrong side of the dress. And then you want to match up the notches or the bust as much as you can. Um, you're going to have to kind of ease it in to these curves. It's going to look like it doesn't fit, but it will, I promise. Just do a lot of pinning. I love to pin this dress, and if you're smarter than me, you should probably just hand baste it. So, you don't have to pin and repin constantly. Um, but I'm a bit lazy, so I just pin a lot. And so you can see how the curve fits into each other like that. But you really need to clip the, the front yoke to be able to um, stretch and fit the dress curve. And then I turn the dress the other way and start pinning. Um, you can see that the skirt portion stretches out like that to fit the front yoke. Once again, you want to match the notches um, to kind of ease it in. And here's the side seams again. I'm eyeballing a half inch there to match with a half inch so I'm not really cutting these clips a lot because I want you guys to see how fiddly it is and you just gotta take your time and and match it up. It will match, um, as you see, but I just say take your time. So here we have it pinned. Make sure the straps aren't stuck. And then I start sewing, let's see, which way? I start sewing with the skirt portion facing you, so the yoke is underneath. Um, I find this easier when you get to the center front pivot point to know that you actually have caught all the layers and everything. And this means that that curve on the front yoke is a bit hard to see and feel, so just take it slow. You can see I use a lot of pins. Um, feel with your fingers underneath so nothing weird is getting caught.
Once again, if you're smarter than me, you should probably have hand basted the yoke to the skirt, but um, I like living on the edge. I like pinning. And here we're coming up to the center front point. So you're going to go up to that dot you made. I used um, washable markers. So I go down, needle down, and then you can pivot and go up the other side of the v neck. I'm having some trouble here with my feet dots, I think. It's not sewing right. Oh, there's a pin. Watch out. is attached so now I'm gonna press the seam allowances upward towards the yoke so you can't see them when you're wearing the dress later. I like to press from the from the right side just to make sure I get a nice flat seam there. Then you can try it on or put it on a mannequin um, so just trying it on just to see how long the straps are if they suit you. There's gonna be elastic in the back there. I think this is a good length for straps. And then I have my second um, pair of front yoke and back elastic channel. And I'm clipping the curves again in the bust there between the notches. Um, no longer than a quarter inch to three eighths because we're gonna press that bottom edge up toward the wrong side okay I just realized I forgot to stay stitch these curves like I say to do in the instruction booklet so please forgive me I am a lazy sewer and I don't like to stay stitch I just try to not stretch out my pieces when I'm working with them um, and it usually works out fine, but you should, you should follow my advice and stay stitch. So yeah, I'm just pressing up 3 eighths of an inch all around that upper yoke and the bottom edge towards the wrong side. pinning the the yokes together at the top edge right sides together
just make sure that your straps are hanging below so they're not getting caught the wrong way. And I sew, I'm just starting in the back here. And so the back you want to sew with a 3 8 seam allowance at the top edge. And then once you get to the front part, you'll go back to a half inch seam allowance. And then down again to 3 8 when you hit the back. So here we're getting down to the center front again. If I was uh, smarter, I would have drawn lines um, to show where the exact center front point is, but I'm kind of good at guesstimating. <laughs> um, so yeah, you just pivot with your needle down in the center front. So after you've sewn all the way around, I like to trim my seam allowance, especially where the straps are attached at the top there. Um, and then I snip the center front so it will turn properly. You can also grade the seams here, and grading just means cutting one of the seam allowances a little bit shorter than the other, so there's not like too much bulkiness inside of the yoke when you're wearing it. And then I also snip the underarms because there's like a slight curve there, just so everything lays really flat and nice when you turn it right side out. And now you can flip the yoke um, right side out. <clears throat> and pull the straps and take out the basting stitches if there's any that you can see. Like right there, and then the back one. And then as much as I can, I press the seam open. It's a little bit hard where the front straps attach, because it's a v-neck but I press the seam open all the way around. Once I've done that, I like to fold it right side out again and kind of finger press the upper edge into place. I'm putting a little pin at the center front. Um, so the yoke that's going to be facing outward can cover that point. And I just finger press a little bit, um, manipulate it with my fingers, and then I pin it into place so the seam line is at the very top there. And I just put pins all the way around because you can also just press. And I like the pin. At this point I like to switch up my foot for a top stitching foot or an edge stitching foot. Actually this is probably blind stitching foot. But, um, so I stitch about an eighth or a sixteenth from the edge with a longer stitch length of three millimeters. And here you can see I've stitched all the way around with the top stitch and now I'm carefully um, pinning the yoke in place because I'm going to do another line of top stitching at the bottom edge of the yoke and you don't want this yoke to pull any weird way so I just kind of really carefully feel it out where it wants to lay um, and so it's covering that seam that we sewed before um, but I pin it and then I like to just lay it on the table and see that nothing's pulling weird and then I stitch it down. You 
can see here I'm matching the side seams so they line up perfectly. Um, but we'll also leave a little bit of uh, space in front of the side seam so we can get the elastic in and we'll stitch that part down the very last. Here you can tell I like to use a lot of pins and once again you can probably hand baste this for better accuracy but I'm a thinner. And then I go around stitching about an eighth to one sixteenth away from that little edge. Um, and I'm using a little screwdriver here as a, as a guide to kind of ease in the extra fabric so it doesn't create creases or bubbles. Um, professional seamstresses have like little dowels that they use to sew but I don't have one yet so I'm using a tiny screwdriver. Yeah, and the trickiest part is probably going around this curved bust area, so take your time and go slow and make sure you catch the edge and that the, the top yoke is covering the seam underneath. And then once you get down to the point, you're just going to stop with your needle down and pivot and go up the other way. see the little hole I left to insert the elastic and I did this by both side seams. And I'm just cutting the elastic to the length of the size chart in the instructions. So my size, I'm making a size 4, it's 15 and a half. And then I put a safety pin on and insert it into the elastic channel. the elastic a little bit too far but I got it back so you want to have that elastic sitting a quarter inch past that side seam and I cut the bottom of it at an angle so it doesn't come out when I'm uh, towards the front there and then I just pin that and we're going to stitch in the ditch later to secure that elastic. The elastic is still not out on the other side so I have to pull it through a little bit more Here it is coming out the other side and I just like give the elastic back a good tug so the um, gathers spread evenly. And then you take out the safety pin and let the elastic sit a quarter inch past the side seam there. Pin it down so it doesn't get lost in the channel. And then pin and stitch. And I'm tugging it again to give it a good spread of gathers. And then we stitch in the ditch, which just means stitching in the side seam right there so you kind of can't see the stitches when you're done. And this secures the elastic on both sides. And there we are. Once you've sewn the elastic shut on both sides, you're done, you try it on. I would still let this dress hang for a day before hemming it because the bias will definitely stretch. Here's the dress on the form. You can see here. Here she is. Um, and then if I go level, see that. This loose weave has drooped front and back a lot, so I made a ruler and I marked the shortest one, bottom of the tape. 
So I'm going to go around and mark um, the bottom of the tape all around the skirt. And if you don't have a dress for him, you can enlist a friend to do this on you while you're wearing the dress. Once you've marked all the way around so it's an even length, I would just lay it out in a large space and uh, cut by your marks as smoothly as you can and then hem it. And there we are, you finished the dress. You should be proud of yourself. Um, please tag me in your makes if you choose to share them on Instagram under Smudge on Dress and tag me Paradise Patterns. Thanks for watching!